Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Mental Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about God's precious promises. So yesterday we did the community meditation on Psalm 128, and we're just talking about how it's got some amazing promises in there for us, especially for our families. And as I was just thinking about that, it just, this verse in 2 Peter chapter 1 kept coming to mind, talking about God's promises as being precious. I was just thinking about it. We just passed through Christmas a couple of days ago. And thinking about what's the gift God's given us. He's given us his son. But he's also given us his precious promises. And seeing these precious promises for what they are. These amazing gifts that God has given us in his promises. And so let's take a look at this scripture here first today. And then we're going to take communion over this. So this is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. It says, God's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Now it says, through these, through what? Through his glory and goodness. He has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in, in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So I've just been meditating on this verse here for probably about a day or two. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And through those, his glory and goodness, he's given us his very great and precious promises so that we can participate in the divine nature. He said, Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for these divine promises. I was thinking about the other day. I was reading through one, Psalm 128, just thinking about those promises that are in there for us. And I was thinking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, about how when the angel appears to her, he tells her something impossible is going to happen. You're going to have a baby even though you're a virgin. And Mary doesn't respond with doubt and unbelief. She just had the word. She just had the promise. That's all she had. And she responds with something like, well, be it unto me. She responds with joy. She believes it. She receives it. And I think God wants the same thing for us. When we see his promises in his word, just say, you know what? I receive it. Thank you, God. So, Father, I just thank you for these precious promises that you've given us. Help us to see them for what they are. Help us to value them and to treasure them, to receive them, to respond the way that you intend us to, to these amazing promises you've given. And all the promises in Christ are yes and amen. We're going to take communion over this here as a way to activate this in our life. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. The Apostle Paul says every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation that sets in motion all the benefits of this new covenant. And so as we take communion today, we're believing we receive this from God today. Just understanding his precious promises and walking in them, receiving them from him. But it's also important we take communion the right way. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says we should be examining ourselves when we take communion. So let's start with, what are the ways that we walked in the light today? We were resting in our soul, open and honest and transparent. We had peace and joy flowing. We brought our best. We weren't just going through the motions we were walking in love, kind and patient and gentle. We gave ourselves or other people that same grace that God has given us. Believing and resting and trusting in these promises he's given. We could contrast that with maybe the ways that we didn't. We were stressed. We were worried. Looking at the size of the problem rather than these promises of God. Maybe snapping at people, getting down, getting upset. 
responding in a harsh or angry way, giving people the silent treatment or retaliating at them. And we're going to bring those areas to God. Maybe the ways that we didn't quite walk in the light there. We've all got some buttons that can get pushed. And Heavenly Father, we're asking for your help. To help us to reprogram those buttons, Lord. We just thank you that every moment of every day we get this opportunity to walk in the light with you. We ask you to forgive us of any ways that we, maybe we missed it. We stepped out of the light for whatever reason. And we thank you that what you put within us is more than enough. You've given us everything we need to live a godly life, a godly life through the knowledge of you. And we ask you to help us to grow and to cultivate what you put within us. So that those things that used to push our buttons, we begin to respond to them in a beautiful, graceful way. And we thank you that the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all turned to our own ways and God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him in his right hand. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And communion is a celebration of our union with him. So, Father, I thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's a forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. And transfers us into the light. Into the kingdom of Jesus, and he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us a fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today in a covenant relationship with God. So, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take a juice. All right, so normally after our time of communion, we talk about some health and fitness tips because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. Let's just do a little reminder today. As you do your movements, our goal is to make it beautiful. And one of the aspects of that is to coordinate or synchronize our movement and our breathing. You want to inhale as you're in the recovery phase, exhale as you're doing the work. I think part of making that beautiful, you don't want your breath to be forced. Think of it as effortless and natural. Too often in the world, we see people forcing their breath in their workouts. Grunting and screaming and breathing too hard. Just a nice natural breathing cycle as you do your exercise, part of making it beautiful. But I hope it's enough for today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.